does ZepBound stop working and are there higher doses coming? I'm Dave Knapp, man on the Manjaro. That's why I'm here. You are on the pen. That's why you're here with Govi, Saxenda, Victoza, Trulisti, Manjaro, ZepBound. And one of the most common questions that I get asked are these two questions. Does it stop working and when will there be higher doses? So here's the best data that we have to answer these two questions. And it's quite compelling because according to the longest study ever done on terzepatide, that was the extension of the Surmount studies, people were still losing weight and maintaining their losses after over three years on terzepatide. And that wasn't just a fluke. The data is super solid and the effectiveness of this medication was sustained for over three years. So the Surmount 1 extension trial followed people with obesity and pre-diabetes for a full 176 weeks. And like I said, this was the longest study that we have so far on terzepatide over three years. And here's what they saw. They saw an average of about 22 to 23% weight loss. And that was maintained for the full three years. Many participants in this trial continued to lose weight beyond that two-year mark. And most of this happened at the 15 milligram dose. But this wasn't the biggest takeaway from this study. Like I mentioned before, prediabetes was something that was being looked at very closely in this study. And there was a 94% reduction in the risk of developing type 2 diabetes for those on ZetBound for the three-year plus period that we saw. The treatment didn't wear off. The outcomes actually got better the longer people stayed on the medication. Now, before we go any further, we don't have the same long-term data for people living with diabetes yet. This was a non-diabetic population with pre-diabetes, which means that their results might not extrapolate out to everyone who's on this medication. But the takeaway here is super clear. ZepBound doesn't stop working, but stopping ZepBound, that's another story. In the Surmount 4 study, people took terzepatide for 36 weeks, and then half the group was switched to a placebo. Again, these poor souls in these trials that have to get on placebo. We just interviewed uh, our friend Joe Naglowski, who's the president and CEO of the Obesity Action Coalition, who are advocating that these future trials for obesity, there would not be a placebo group. There's plenty of other options of older GLP-1 medications that people can get treatment for. But I digress. Half placebo, half stayed on terzepatide. The people who stayed on ZepBound in this trial kept losing weight, but the people who stopped gained half their weight back in under a year. That's a huge number. And many lost the metabolic progress that they had made. But this is how obesity works. It's not a moment in time. It's not a snapshot. It's not a phase. It's a chronic disease that requires ongoing treatment or you relapse, just like high blood pressure, just like depression, just like type 2 diabetes. When you stop treating it, it comes back. Why do we treat obesity any different? When someone says ZepBound stopped working, what they actually might mean is they hit a plateau, which is normal. Their dose isn't right. They may need the 15 milligrams to sustain or to continue to get the most progress out of the medication. Or they're expecting continued weight loss when they've maxed out what the medication will give them and they're maintaining. And maintenance is actually the goal here. So here's the key takeaway. We've got multi-year data showing that ZepBound can help people lose significant weight and keep it off at the 15 milligram dose especially but it only works as long as you take it. If you're feeling stuck or frustrated, don't assume that the medication has stopped working. Talk to your provider, reevaluate your dose. Look at the full picture because the real danger isn't that ZepBound stops working. It's that people stop it before it has the chance to work long enough. Now for those looking for higher doses, Lily is also investigating higher doses of terzepatide in the form of Manjaro beyond the 15 milligram, where we currently lack long-term three-year data that's in type two diabetics. Now, according to a clinicaltrials.gov entry for NCT 0465-7003, catch that? This phase two, three dose ranging study is actively evaluating 20 and 25 milligrams 
The 20 and 25 milligram dose is actually a bit of speculation, but we have received word from people administering this clinical trial that those are indeed the investigational doses. Uh, but the trial is listed as active and not recruiting with a primary completion date of February of 2026 with full readouts later in 2026, which means late 2026, early 2027 is sort of the target that we plan on having high dose terzepatide probably in the form of Manjaro available on the market. That's again around the same time that we'll see Retitrutide hit the market. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here and thank you for being the best part of what we do here at On The Pen. I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so that you can get updates as we release them. A lot of what we do here at On The Pen is breaking news so that you can have more competent and confident conversations with your medical providing team. I'm Dave Knapp, man on the Manjaro. Thanks for being here and we'll catch you on the next one.